pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, good evening. Our first uh, agenda item is public participation. Is there anyone here for public participation? Hearing none, I will move to the report of the chairman. Uh, number one, I'd like to say a very big thank you um, to the Board of Ed members and um, all of the district staff that attended the Board of Finance meeting on 331. It was a, a great showing. Um, everyone was available to answer questions. So Joe, thank you and your staff uh, and the board members that made it, uh, whether it was uh, on Zoom or in person. Um, very impactful. And um, we had a good conversation with the Board of Finance that night Excellent. about our budget. The other thing I just want to let um, everyone know or remind everyone that uh, this is our only board meeting of this month. Don't start crying. Um, but uh, spring break, uh, our next meeting would normally fall on spring break. And since the schools are closed, there's no meeting. So just keep that in mind. And that's all I have. So I'd like to move to the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as in the minutes? Uh, Jerry, seconded by Christine. All right. Uh, any any um, conversation or questions? Just Joe? Wanna, I just yeah. want to yeah, I just want to wish Amy Grasso, uh, we learned last week, Amy Grasso, has decided to retire after 21 years in the Monroe Public Schools. Amy spent uh, her career at, I think, all three levels. Um, she, we worked together here at the high school. She was at the most recently at the middle school, and I know she's worked at the elementary school as well. So we wish Amy the best as she uh, as she moves on to retirement. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any objections to the motion? Hearing none, it, it is approved unanimously. Thank you. Reports of the committees. We'll start with our student representatives. Take it away. Education. I hope everyone's having a marvelous <laughs> Monday. Um, Massic Junior Senior Prom will be held this Friday at the Aqua Turf in Plainsville from 6.30 to 11.30. And post prom will be held shortly afterwards at Massic from 11.30 to 2.30 a.m. And additionally, there will be an assembly for seniors and juniors during Flex tomorrow regarding prom. Let's see. In sports, boys lacrosse won 4-3 against Shelton on Saturday, and girls lacrosse won 17-2 against Shelton as well the same day. Congratulations to Winter Color Guard team for being 2022 SWC champions. And Lauren Henry recently committed to United States Coast Guard Academy for lacrosse, and boys and girls tennis have their first matches against Newtown tomorrow. The finals for the 2022 Battle of the Books is up, so students should make sure to vote before 2 p.m. on Friday. The Massic B Positive Club had a fundraiser this weekend at Mr. Mack's Canteen. They sold bracelets, and all the proceeds are going to the Andrew McDonough Foundation for Childhood Cancer. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll add uh, JV Boys Volleyball won their <laughs> game tonight. So, Thank you. Any other reports from board members on committees? No? Okay. Report of the superintendent, Joe. I'll start off by uh, asking Darlene to come up and uh, give her monthly special education update. I'll be quicker than I was last month. <laughs> um, so, if, so if you take a look at my um, enrollment sheet, you notice that special education um, continues to grow. Yep. We have, um, during the month of March, we didn't have any students that moved into district with IEPs. Um, we had one student dismissed from services and five students who were made eligible, which brings our special education enrollment to 521 students. Um, and then my financial update, you'll notice our bottom line or the available budget has increased this month. This is because we received the first payment of excess cost. Um, if you remember last month, I mentioned that our March, file, our March 1st filing was very um, significantly lower than our December 1st filing. So it, it was about $100,000, $100, um, approximately $100,000. But that, now they sent the 
the check from the December filing. So we will, you'll see in the upcoming months, a reduction of $100,000 in our available budget. So that we have to give that back. Um, there are no other significant changes in our, in our line items this month, but we do have three students who are in the referral process, process for placement, so that, that might, may change before the end of the school year also. Um, we continue to trend in the positive, and we're going to utilize a portion of the funds to provide training and supplies to, for our staff as you know the district numbers continue to grow. I think it's really important that we provide some training to them, and we, um, we are going to need more supplies because our numbers have increased significantly. So we, we still need testing kits. We still need um, you know instructional kits that, that teachers are using, so we will we'll be buying those at the end of the school year so we'll, we'll watch the bottom line just to make sure we don't go over but we're in a good spot that's good any questions for Darlene thank you no stop thank you Ron do you mind uh, go over the um, the budget transfers yeah so uh, later on in the meeting we'll be asked to vote on uh, budget transfers two of them were uh, requests outside of the finance department department and the last two were uh, transfers that the finance department put together um, so the first one <clears throat> was a request from stepney elementary to move 200 dollars in supplies from one supply line to another the uh, second request was at the request of sheila for a five thousand dollar transfer um, from curriculum writing to uh, supplies. The third transfer um, was a utility, was a uh, transfer among the utility accounts um, to move uh, available funds to uh, accounts where we needed funds. Um, so um, on page 37 in your packet, you'll see um, I was moving uh, $27,000 from both natural gas MASIC and electricity MASIC to cover uh, um, the oil at Stephanie Elementary School and um, a, por and a portion of the heat um, at Fawn Hollow, which is, on electric, which is actually electric. Um, and then the fourth transfer was to move uh, available funds in the gasoline line to the diesel line. So I don't know if anyone has any questions specific to any of those. Anyone have any questions for Ron? Good. Um, for the diesel mm -hmm. move, do you, are we going to need to we, keep we doing might, this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be monitoring that. It's, okay. It's trending a little hot on both sides, town and board of that. And then when the board of finance goes, when they do their final budget wrap up, they are talking be, about for next year now? Yeah, will yeah, there be so something in there? We're looking at building a contingency in sides so we might be seeing more of these for this year yeah yeah um, I, right now we um, I may end up moving some money from asking to move some money from the uh, from Massic um, the Massic utilities it looks like so there's some more money but uh, we're also um, we allocated a portion of the money that hit the diesel line to the special ed transportation line to allocate the portion of the diesel related to special ed buses so that's going to free up a little money also that did not hit me that journal so. okay i but just we'll, oh no i was going to say just this, just something that i think every maybe not every meeting but maybe like we, we should definitely track this because it could really balloon and you know we don't want to be in may 29th and looking for stuff <laughs> that's all yeah and it could keep climbing right prices right i mean diesel's north of Four dollars a gallon right now. So. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dennis. So, Ron, there's no contingency for this year. You're building it the next year potentially, Correct. right? Correct. So, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a good idea, though. I think for us on the town side, you know, it's it's an uncertainty, so good. it'll be nice. Well, you know, and I, I've had the discussion, and you know, I think everyone realizes school buses need to run. Police cars need to run. Mm -hmm. DPW trucks need to run. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, um, remind me uh, which schools um, are heated with oil. Not that we'll need oil um, 
hopefully too much longer, but which, I know it's Stephanie, but Stephanie. is that the only one we still have? Correct. Anything else for Ron? Okay, Joe. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to put together a little piece on the uh, lunch programs and the options. I want to thank Jack. Jack did a lot of work gathering uh, information and data. And just as we get ready to, uh, as we get ready to um, go out to RFP, so Ron, I, I know just I think you had asked. What, when does the uh, RFP officially go out? It's it's actually on the street now. It's on it's on yeah. the thing now. And we oh, I'm sorry. When do we? I'm just get back. To, Getting a May, correct? Yeah, we're, we're, I believe we're doing a walkthrough at all the sites tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, responses, I don't have the schedule in front of me, Joe. I think it's uh, next week. Okay. Do, do, we have, do we have responses yet, Ron, in terms of who's uh, put in? No. So, as we're, I, I know the, the questions came up last time, and I just, I want to, Try to do my best. I learned more about uh, food service programs uh, than I ever thought I would know uh, in the past few uh, since the last meeting. Just trying to, you know, just make sure we're all on the same page as we move forward. But wherever we go with, that, you know, it's who we go with. But just understanding the different options that are out there. And there's really there's three. I'm going to spend most of this time talking about the National School Lunch Program and being off program because that's kind of where we are right now. But just so just so we're clear, there's also the healthy food certification. The healthy food certification is a state program. We're actually gonna vote on it later tonight. We usually vote no to, to not be on the healthy food certification. And the reason for that is in order to be a healthy food in order to be healthy food certified district, every school needs to be on the National School Lunch Program. We haven't been on the National School Lunch Program at Massac now for I don't know, at least the last seven to 10 years, at least. As we're gonna be doing tonight, it requires a board vote, a certification every year. The healthy food certification means that you have to file, follow Connecticut nutrition standards. You have this uh, presentation at home. I'm sorry, you have this presentation. It's also linked to the agenda. So anyone at home, if they wanna actually go on and look up what the, the nutritional requirements are, it's actually a little bit more stringent than the, the dietary uh, requirements in the National School Lunch Program. The other reason why we, we usually veer away from it is it includes all food. So anything that's sto sold in the school stores, vending, fundraising, everything would have to meet the nutritional requirements under the healthy food certification. And for all that, we get a, you would get, a district would get 10 cents per lunch based on the number of reimbursable lunches from, from the year before. So again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because we haven't done it in years. I don't anticipate us. I know the, the conversation is NSLP or off program. Uh, we're already off program at the high school. I don't, don't think there's, sorry for the pun, no appetite to go back on the, uh, no appetite to go back on the uh, on program at the high school at this at this time right now. So, but that's just a, it's another it's another example. Or it's one of the programs. So right now, NSLP schools are all the schools except for Massac. Massac's the only one that's that's off program. So just so you understand a little bit about the um, about the NSLP in the off program. So National School Lunch Program is a federally assisted program. I'm going to drill down to some numbers a little bit. Where if you're off program, it's just local. Uh, there's a there's a nutritional requirements that you have to follow if you go to this link. If you're on the National School Lunch Program, you, know, the, um, you just can't serve whatever. So that's where you'll get more wheat pastas and brown rices and uh, whole grain breads and things like that. So they have to follow very specific guidelines. Not as specific as if, if you were on the National School Lunch Program and the Healthy Food Certification, but still pretty strict guidelines. Whereas if, if you're off program, you can serve, uh, you can serve um, pretty much whatever you want, with the exception of beverages. And, so tonight we'll be voting for the healthy food certification and for the beverage exemption later on. And I'll explain that later. That, that's different. You just no matter if you're on the NSLP or you're off program, you cannot just sell, for example, soda. So we for years we used to there used to be vending machines here and we sold soda. That got taken out. That got taken out years ago and it's just it's not possible anymore. If you're in the National School Lunch Program, you're gonna receive reimbursements, subsidies. And you're also going to receive commodities 
uh, from the USDA at, at reduced prices. I'll show you the, the numbers because it's important. I know there's talk about do we want to be on the program, do we want to be off the program. I just want everyone to know, you know what the risks are of uh, and, and, you know, the benefits and costs of being on either one. If you're off program, there's obviously there's no federal subsidies um, or access to any reduced uh, reduce price <coughs> foods. <coughs> NSLP, there's uh, low cost free lunches for qualified students. Uh, if you're going to run an off, if you're going to run off program, and this is what we've done at Massac, you have to cover the you have to cover the cost of free and reduced lunch students, and that's the, the arrangement we we made with Sodexo is that you know at the high school we would cover the cost of free and reduced uh, lunches, but it's got to it's got to get covered somewhere, so it's got to be within the uh, the profits of the uh, of the program. And again, if you want to go to the link and see specifically what the dietary requirements are. I've, I've left the links in there for you. Um, just so you have an idea of, of what lunch looks like in our buildings, standard lunch at the elementary school, 295. Standard lunch at Jockey Hollow, 375. Standard lunch at Massac, which if you are on free and reduced lunch at Massac, this is the this is the lunch you, you, you have to uh, purchase. So you either get whatever the hot entree, entree is with the two sides, or the burger, or the pizza and two sides. And, doesn't come up that's not fries by the way um, and that's that's what you uh, that's what you have to get um, but if you look at some of the other um, items there you know we have really great sandwiches. I, was, I, was, I never it was never a day where I didn't have a good lunch when I was here at Massa uh, you know the the, uh, the boar's head meats the chicken I always, I always joke about the chicken tenders and fries they said those are huge hits but you see that the price goes up obviously as you're off program and as you get into some of the you know, a cart items down down below here. The deli sandwich, same thing at, at Jockey Hollow. If you do the deli lunch, that does not qualify for the free reduce. So if you're if you're on free reduce lunch, you have to stick with the uh, the standard lunch. So that's just where our prices are. We've we maintained prices from 2020 to 2022. This is this year's prices at Massac off program. I just want to talk about free and reduced lunch for a second. So, if you are on free and if you are on free and reduced lunch in the National School Lunch Program, you get on that by either being on SNAP, which is the Federal Assistance for uh, Food Service. If you receive free medical, you have you're uh, offered free lunch. If you have reduced medical, it's um, you you have reduced lunch, and then there's an application, and I'll show you the application because. These two applications are the same. So for our, all, of our, all of our schools that are on the National School Lunch Program, that's how you qualify for free and reduced lunch. For MASIC, it's pretty much at the discretion of the district. That was a conversation I think this board had years ago that if you were on SNAP, you had free lunch, or if it was, or you filled out the application and it went, it was income based by that. And if you look at the incomes, So what it does is, it, I don't really understand what the household size of one is because that would be a student living by himself, but a household of two with an annual gross income of $22,000 would qualify for, for free lunch, a household of two, so that might be a single parent and a, and a child at 32000 would qualify for reduced lunch, and then it goes all the way down to you know, a household size, size of eight. So that's what's used to determine free and reduced uh, lunches by the virtue of the application. So if someone is not on SNAP, not, not receiving free medical or reduced medical, they fill out the application and we do make a verification and they have to uh, receive where they fall on this and then that determines where they're, where they're gonna be. <coughs> to give you an idea of where we are, the, um, the national, uh, I'm sorry, for the last five years, these are our numbers for free and reduced um, students. Just so we understand now, if you remember the prices of the uh, of the base lunches, 295, 375, and 390. The National School Lunch Program, if you're if you're again for those schools on the National School Lunch Program, so really 
the, the elementary schools and the middle school, a free lunch reimburses the district back $3.66, $3 reduced $3.26. All students, all paid lunches, get reimbursed $0.35 cents if you're on the National School Lunch Program. No reimbursement at the, uh, at the high school for those. And to give you an idea of where we stand right now, this is how many, and it's been a fairly consistent number um, that have, uh, that are on free and reduced lunch across years. But one thing you will notice is a drop from the middle school to the high school in terms of free and reduced lunch. And I think part of that is there's less ways to qualify for free and reduced lunch. It's just either, either your income or your, or your SNAP. Um, so it's something for us, you know, again, to consider as we, as we go through this. Um, this here's, here's kind of the big one. So the, what we did was we went back to 2018-19, the last kind of regular year we had. And just to give you an idea of what we would need to do if, if we decided to go off program for all the schools. And I'll, I'll come back to the other one in a second. In 2018-19, we sold 156,294 reimbursable meals. 22,256 free meals. Remember what we get reimbursed at, at those rates. 9,196 reduced meals. We, we got back $150,197 back to the district. We also get seven cents a meal from the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act. Again, that's through the National School Lunch Program. That was another little bit shy of $11,000. There's a state reimbursement match of four cents a meal. That was another $7,700. Um, and then there's this $60,450, which actually is in dollars, it's commodities. By participating in the National School Lunch Program, we were able to buy produce and food uh, to the tune of $60,450. So we could buy, for example, $60,450 worth of chicken. Or I know when I talked to uh, Alan Dean the other day, he said it was usually a lot of their higher protein items, they would use that USDA <coughs> supplement to buy those types of food. So it's, you understand it's not $60,450 in cash, it's $60,450 of food stuffs there uh, for a total of $229,000. Um, $229, the one thing that kind of jumped out of this today is if you add all these students up, you're looking at about 300 and I think it's about 316 students K through eight that are on the, uh, that are on the either the free or reduced lunch program. That represents so 316 out of about roughly 2,300. I'm just I'm just ballparking numbers here. You're looking at about 15 or 16 percent. So the only thing I would caution is if, if we were to go go off program, that we'd have to we'd have to make that up. That's that's a pretty good number. Of, that's a pretty good number of students. Whereas at Massac right now, you know we have 52 kids that are off program. Um, out of a thousand kids, so you're looking at about five percent there. So, Joe, if we went off program mm -hmm. at any of the other schools, mm -hmm. let's take that that percentage variance would go from fifteen percent to five percent as well. Is that the projection? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I really. I, I you have a thousand know. students and you have fifty-two in there, right? Yeah. What's our total population at Jockey Hollow? Um, about eight hundred. Just the criteria is different, though. Well, that's, that's what I'm getting at, though. So if you go off program, the criteria, so therefore you'd have less people. No, but the criteria for Jockey House is different than the criteria for Massa, correct? I'm saying right now, but with Jockey House, okay, okay, if you off, off program. It would just go back to the income. The and, and it have, would be an income you'd verification. You'd have less criteria, so right. you'd have less people less part people. of the, the free and reduced lunch, so that number would drop down. <clears throat> but what won't drop down is the 229,000. Correct. Got to leave. Yeah, I mean, we have to, <laughs> we still have to, come we have to make that up. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be very hesitant the first year going out. I don't, whoever we have, I, I really, I'd be hesitant to move move away from this because. Why wouldn't that dollar reduce though? Sorry, I'm, I'm. If you have less reimbursable meals going out, wouldn't that your exposure would come down with it as well? Because you're not having to reimburse all those meals back, right? If there's less, no, people, those, those this are, is revenue. Less reimbursement that we're getting reimbursed. Right, because right, you had, you had to give those meals out, right? We're, getting, we're, getting, we're being reimbursed because those meals are going out as free or reduced. And, and uh, regular meals are, are reduced 35 cents, 7 cents, and 4 cents. So, um, 
Right, so those those cents. right those would stay the same because those are constant. But in terms of the the meals that you're being reimbursed on, of whether they're free or reduced, if you have less free or reduced going out, then your need for reimbursement would be less. So you wouldn't be reimbursed at the 150 because you'd have less going out. Right? Am I understanding that, or am I? Do you follow me? You're uh, saying based off of the criteria because you have more. It's Correct. like insurance based, medical based. So you're seeing the pool of children who would or students who would qualify should come down if you base it off of MASIC but yeah. again you don't know, don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's a it's a crapshoot it could it could not <clears throat> but your reimbursement will come down definitely the you, the, the yeah. given is everything else right right the 60,000 the, the 77 the right, 10 that, that, that reimbursement need would come down because just by following that logic we have a thousand students at MASIC and we have five percent that are on free or reduced lunch, right? So if you apply that logic to the rest of the population within Monroe across elementary and middle school, you, you effectively would have a 5% population. And so you'd have less free meals, less reduced meals going out. So there'd be less of a need of reimbursement to come back. So that 150 is a static number based on that staying the same. But if those numbers were to come down, you, you wouldn't the have to- The other numbers stay the same though. I actually, they might not. If, or is, is the seven cents and the four cents reimbursement for regular meals? That's constant. Yeah. yeah. That's so if we sell more regular again. meals, then those numbers <clears throat> would go up. Right. <clears throat> but if you go off the <clears throat> NSLP, <throat> do you get that? No. 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 Right. That's what I'm saying. So regardless, you know you're the 60, the 60, 70, almost $80,000, you'd have to cover. you got to cover. A hundred percent. Yes. Like there is no debate on that. Which means... We, and it could be more than that because even, so, like you said, so if they don't hit the 150, they're going to go into regular meals we would have to co cover that with a budget that we already passed correct. or by raising lunches correct to the kids that are paying mm -hmm. well that's not necessarily true for going out to rfp we don't even know what the numbers are right. of what you know mm -hmm. we may be able to put that in there like Masic, where the the people who are providing lunches pay for a portion of um the, the, the free lunches but the rfps right. are already out right the RFPs mm -hmm. are already they're out yep the, the RFPs have been, uh, they're yeah, out, you're right? Talking about for, uh, so we can't change the conditions now. Right. They were, yeah. What, what, Is that what you meant, Joe? You what, can or you what can't. Do you mean, right, you can't change the condi conditions. We'd have to reissue the RFP. If the RFP is out, Correct. we would have to withdraw it and mm -hmm. resend it out with... Asking that they would cover in an elementary school. Because the companies are bidding based on what we RFP'd out. Is Correct. Already so, so, RFP'd. So the RFP is for the NSLP. Mm -hmm. Right now, this so if we pulled that RFP, if we decided to go off program, which I think is that the conversation? Yes, yeah, I think that's I think part the of pros that. and cons of yeah. that, right? <clears throat> I mean, that anything we goes. Could, we, we would have to, uh, um, at that <coughs> point, probably issue another RFP to to go off program. <clears throat> I'm not opposed to going off program. I would just want somebody in here besides us <laughs> throwing darts at these, yeah. at well, these numbers, I, trying I, to pretend like because there's. I don't know what I don't know. Well, that's my issue. I'm right now opposed to going off the program because, Ron, I mean, since we're looking at years, how many, how many RFPs have we got back in the past? How many companies, in your estimation, are bidding for the contract? Two? Two. One, one or well, two. One or two. <laughs> that's that's my, it. That's my problem. We never get more than that. Yeah. We never get more than Ever. two. Maximum of two. And that's it. That's a good year. Yeah. All right. But well, so you're opening yourself up for, open for no comparison. Do you know how many it's other schools are It's a brand new slate, and you can charge whatever you want. Are it's off an of it? Uh, yeah, At an elementary that, level, I should say. We have that chart. There's very few districts in the state that are completely off program. I think it's like half a dozen. Yeah. I, in, I don't know. I, I mean, where I lean with it, again, this is, I, I purposely proactively reached out to parents to try to get feedback on this, because I, I didn't want to look at it just from, from my experience with it. but. Um, I, I think from a jockey hollow perspective, I think off program definitely has to be an option that we look at and consider deeply. Elementary, I don't know if you it's necessarily it. as much of a need. Yeah. You can't. But you can't do you can't do jockey hollow, right? Can you take jockey hollow off by itself? You, can. <coughs> you could. Why not? Once one school is off, it doesn't matter, right? So. So you could still do <laughs> elementary. <laughs> you could still have elementary on, yeah. Okay. Again, I would want the food service oh, company wow. telling me, uh, exactly. hey, this is viable. If not, you know. Right. Uh, we're going to be hiring but, chefs. But what I'm saying is if the RFP is going out as if it's an NSLP RFP, I do think that that's, that would need to change, right? Because I, I think within scope has to be the jockey hollow. We, we would need to look at that. Because I, I just, 
the options there, from what I'm hearing, are not great. I don't think you're having as many people take advantage of the school lunch as it currently stands today. I'm getting feedback, the quality is, is not great. Um, and it's not like the nutrition is any more enhanced or anything like that. So to me, give the kids the option, the idea that their salad is an option and things like that. You're giving the kids the assortment that they're looking for and the quality they're looking for. So, I mean, I, that's, that's where my head's going. I think Jockey Hollow has to be in scope as far as that goes. To go on what Justin just said, how much, I don't know if you remember, when we went off the NSLP at Massac, how much did the lunches increase after we went off program? I'm just curious. I, I don't they know. They increased, but yeah, I have no I think idea more what percent. Bought no, no, I know that, but I just want to know how better. much. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Like a I, couple cost of dollars? Wise. Yeah. I think. They, they, they I was, was it like in, yeah. It's if you go back to. Go back to that slide. Yeah. I think it was in the threes or so, three to four, and now it's like That's five. I, was I, I want to say it's like a two dollar. Yeah. It went up to. Yeah. I think it's held pretty tight around this because I remember they were trying to be. Yeah. Around that price point. Are you, are you talking five, cost, Jerry? Are you talking in terms of total dollars through the register? Oh, no, no. I was talking cost to, to the child or the yeah. family. Yeah. I'm sorry, the I family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean I don't think it was more than $2, more or less. Okay. No, that, I was just curious. I can't remember. I mean, it's been a while. Well, the, yeah. I mean, the standard lunch there, I mean, there's only a 15 cent difference between the standard lunch off program and Jackie Hollow standard mm -hmm. lunch. It's, it's 15 cents there. It's just when you start to go into the customization aspect, but again, you're giving the student the opportunity and the ability to choose assortment, right? So I, I think that's, that's key, especially at that age, they start to have different flavor choices. You want them to engage in school lunch. I think it, it takes some of the burden off of parents to have to pack lunches every day. Jeff, what did you want to say? Well, I say we made the decision for, for Massic to come off, mm -hmm. right? I mean, <clears throat> what, 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 you know, what went into that decision uh, and when Why didn't when was that? that in relation to the RFP? I think we did that we did that mid contract. So we could mm -hmm. easily have, bring somebody new on and go off program mm -hmm. at some point. Easily. I think that's easily enough. We did that in there. And it was with their input. Right. And that's what that's the that's the one. Which is why we did only mass it because for some reason I think the cost to go off at the middle school and definitely the elementary school was a huge burden especially like you know i mean we already passed our budget so where would you find that extra money to subsidize us i th i think what i'm hearing is we need some hard numbers mm -hmm. we don't this is our only meeting this month i know so we need some hard numbers i agree i agree joe mm -hmm. there's obviously a lot of interest into making a different decision and um but we would have to have somebody come in our first meeting in May, and does that give us enough time, right. or do we need to redo the RFP if we take Jockey Hollow off? So I, I don't have a definitive answer on the on the last point there. Yep. Um, I don't believe so. Though. Um, now the, the timetable we set it was kind of we were the NSLP RFP is kind of predicated on uh, the state kind of runs the show there. And we had to get everything approved by the, the state, so we had to start that process. Right, Otherwise, right. We, you know, that yeah, because was going to be off the table. Right, because we're going to July one. Yeah, it's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is you you know we only have to enter into a one year contract with options for four additional years. I think that's the way the contract right. is structured. So even if we decided to stay on program as we are now, we could change it after. Get a right. lot more information. I was going to say exactly, and then we can budget correctly, because then we could put it in our budget for next year if we're going to go off, right? Yeah, or or we have to increase prices on the kids that are paying, right, to cover the free and reduce if we come off everything, right? Yeah, I mean, I think in the perfect world, I don't think we want to get into the lunch business of subsidizing lunches. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but I, I mean, if the, if it's factored into, you know, the the. The company that's making the bid, if they factor some of that into the, the pricing of the profits to cover off on that, then we don't have to subsidize anything. No, that's what we're saying. Yeah, don't subsidize it. Well, put saying, it, put it into the price. Well, I'm saying if we stick with the NSL and then make the decision later, I'm saying if we make the move now to off-program, just because we passed the budget, doesn't necessarily mean we have to subsidize that in 22. I think there's a way to work with the company to make sure that They would have to put coming. it in the prices. Yeah. Right. Right? Right. By how much, I don't know, though. That's yeah. what we did at Massac. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what we did at Massac. Yeah. And yeah. Dennis. First question first. Do we have time to do this? 
to get an analysis in here so we can see it, have it broken out a little bit better so we understand what we're getting into. Uh, I don't know what time frame that is based on the decision we have to make. I mean, the contract's up already, right? So can we have a thorough analysis just looking at that fact of taking Jockey Hill? Because there has been, to you know, Justin's and Jeff's point, there's basically a cottage industry going on right now with Jockey Hollow. The leftover lunches are being scooped up and, and repurposed to other people. So I hear the noise that you're hearing, um, and people are concerned. So it'd be interesting to see what the financial ramifications are if we can get that. It's a big nut, 115 people, right? That's that's the largest one out there, right? So um, if we took them off, it's going to be an interesting mm. dynamic, right? Well, Jockey Hollow is a focus. <clears throat> Of our attention right now, right? Right, right. I think you know, just that analysis. If we took them to the same status as as Masic, what would the financial ramifications be, and can our current contracted service handle that? I think that's what we have to do. I think we'd have to ask the next order to make. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to keep to them out of the, out of, out of yeah. this overview conversation right now, knowing that they're up. But I, I think they're the only ones that would be able to tell us. So yeah, this is uh, this is viable. It's not viable. I know that they're nervous by the amount of, like I said. The amount of um, students that are free and reduced, free and reduced at the other schools. Now, would that number drop down? It probably would. Um, but again, you're talking a set of paribus, right? We don't know what the contract rates are. Everything's going up out there, right? You know, wheat's getting scarce now, so we don't know what the prices are going to be on the new contract coming in. So it, it'd be now to ask that question, right? You said 18 numbers up there, right? Mm -hmm. Joe, is there anything that's required, like uh, between, so the setup at Massic, is there anything that's different than the setups at the other schools? Like, in other words, do we need to bring in additional people to make to take off at Jockey Hall if we uh, the NSFE? Uh, yeah, I would think difference. difference. Yeah, are you saying what do we need? To so if we did, people? like, yeah, more people. In other words. Well, and equipment, I would right, think too. Right. The setup at yeah. Jockey Hall is nowhere like this setup here. They're two different. Totally different cafeterias, size-wise. Yeah, it's another yeah. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. another very valid point. Yeah. So don't buy those freezers yet. <laughs> <laughs> we need the king sizes. Um, so timing, Ron. If we have Sodexo come in, let them know exactly what we're, you know, the pros and cons of what we're contemplating. Do we have that time if we do it the first yeah, board meeting? So Next month. I guess my, and, and you know, because the RFP's on the street right now, I, I don't know how much we can bring Sodexo into the conversation. Because they're bidding on it. Because mm -hmm. they're bidding. And I, and I know Chartwell's interested. That's why I was asking Ron to see if, if he could disclose who's actually bid for it yet. Because I, I, don't, I know I Chartwell think until they're, they're closed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, again, there's a walkthrough tomorrow. It's a required walkthrough, so we'll, we'll know who shows up tomorrow. That'll be the first indicator, I think. Right, but I'm saying publicly we need to keep the RFP process whole. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask this: Can we? Can you do multiple RFP processes? Is there any downside to doing that, or, or can you do that? So, yeah, an RFP with well, off, good faith. Like people will look at it. you like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. Well, here's the other thing: Could we still push through the current RFP? But then if we decide to change Jockey Hollow next year, how much does that change the RFP? When's the RFP due? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yeah, May. So May? The, um, So you can ask the current provider to do an analysis for you. No. Even during an RFP process? Because well, they're bidding. Because They're it, bidding, but they're, they're your current provider. So but in the RFP, if, you, if we not, were to change what we're doing currently with you, no, what's I, the I net effect? Saying. But the RFP is yeah. specified. I would, I, would, uh, I would probably talk to the state before I do yeah. Because the RFP already well, because states. Because the state runs the RFP process. Right. And they already, right. Put, they already specified the, whatever it's called, NSLP. I'd ask the state. I think you can still ask questions. Yeah, yeah you can definitely ask the state. I mean, they'd be their, your best. Right, we're trying to do an analysis. Be able to tell you. The, we could guess all the we want. You're not interfering yeah. with the RFP. The RFP is going to come back as is. Listen, as if the state it. comes back and says yes, then we have our answer. If they come back and say no, there's yeah, our in answer. In a normal world, you'd have the suppliers come in and present their best offer. Right. right. Or, or whatever. Well, not, <laughs> not even the RFP process, but it's like our current provider knows that Massic's not on it. If we did ask them just flat out, what if we did the same thing to Jockey Hollow and see what they say? Yeah. That impact. It's, it has nothing to do with the RFP. It's just basically talking about our options. 
I, I, I think the state would give you a nod. But, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I don't want to play one. But So um, why don't we check with the state? Yeah, that's what I would do. And we can follow up next meeting mm -hmm. okay. with this. We don't have to make a decision on this tonight. But obviously no, yeah. there's, yeah. there's no, a, the lot only decision of, a lot of interest in it. Sorry. <laughs> to, no, but if the, the state only decision comes is back. that you have to have an emergency meeting if we're not in session while the decisions have to be made. Well, do we right. have to? If the state comes back and says, yes, you can change the RFP, do we have to vote on that? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think then you can change the RFP. I don't think we have. I don't think we have to do because we didn't vote on the first RFP. <clears throat> I don't recall. We'll have to ask. Yeah, you, you right. We didn't vote on the first. You'd want the can I get clarification on the exact question? Is it we can run multiple RFPs or no? No, I don't think you can run multiple system. RFPs. No. The question I, to the city is: Can separate, we separate? Uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Let me try for myself. The RFP is the RFP. It is as whole as presented. I'm not touching that at all. The question to the state is, can we ask our current provider yes. to do an analysis of taking Jockey Hollow the same status as Masic and doing a, a run the numbers for us to see what we're getting into. So when the RFP is awarded, we can decide what we're doing. Because right now we have very limited data to make that decision. You know, it's, it's guesswork. But they know what they're doing and they have a better better idea of what that impact would be on any service that's that's my question if that's clear enough for everybody right can they can they participate but just giving us numbers right right mm -hmm. so then are we giving them the heads up that we might be moving i'm just asking i've you're, done a lot of rfps i've done yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of rfps you're not giving them a heads up that they may be you may be moving or that you're just looking at all your options right but are they going to look at do. this and say okay they're going to jump ship at jockey hollow and we're going to have to provide it's lunch there right yeah. and, uh, and to increase gotcha. cost so yeah they could they could gotcha. be looking at that and it may you know not being the devil's advocate but it may be well i can get more lunches at more cost at a higher price it may behoove them to want to do that right so you know i think it's a simple question i think you know if we keep it simple and not get too complicated with the legalese I think we'll be fine but we're having the conversation this is a public meeting so the <laughs> the cat's out of the bag yeah they know if they want to listen to this you know we're true. we're we're, we're, Very looking, true. we're looking at potentially taking jockey hollow off of the program so um but yeah we have to be careful because we're in a bid process that the state runs so but I think before we reach out to Sodexo we need to ask Dennis's mm -hmm. question to the state can they provide us some numbers uh, limited to that question Conversely, it'd be, it'd be like saying, well, you know what, we thought about when we want to put Massic back on. At what point can you make that decision? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe we can amend the RFP while it's out there and just let every, you know. All That's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought your question was going to be. Can you amend the RFP to add this as a... Just an option. an option. That's all. I, that's where I thought we were going with this. Which may be the secondary step. Right. Because right. that would make more sense to me. And and that has happened. Right. And you would give the all the vendors right. extended yeah. time. That that was that's where I was going with this. Which yeah, I think is the second step after the first one. Will they be but. able to place bids on both scenarios? Right. Is that how? Only if, it's written, only, if, yes. only if it's written that way. So you just need to find out from the state if you could add the addendum to that asking if we put the middle school on or take it off. That was a state making a decision. <laughs> Mic <Mike> drop. <laughs> Literally. That's <laughs> enough. That's it. That's it. That's so You're funny. sending your cup to the lab, Jerry. Bless you when Jerry's died. <laughs> um, Nick, is that what you were going to no, say? No, that was, that was the conversation. That's yeah. I okay. I was just going to say that you know, if, if Sodexo is bidding, then if we ask them for this analysis, then we need as soon as we ask Sodexo for the analysis, if any other bids have come in, or you'll see if your walkthrough tomorrow, everybody else should be mm -hmm. made aware too. Well, that's why you're asking the state first, right? Because you want to, oh, yeah. you don't want to jeopardize the RFP process, right? Right. Sorry. Right. right. Okay. We agree. That's where we're going. I think that's a good plan. Get some more information. And I'm okay anyway. We can yeah, yeah. I have no. I mean, I don't. You know, it's, I just want to. You know, my concern is you know being fiscally responsible and making sure that you know. Mm -hmm. I think school lunch should always be a, a budget neutral thing, and it always has been mm -hmm. here. It's always been. You know, we have a, an agreement with Sodexo now at the high school that it's budget neutral at the high school, and there's a five thousand dollar 
you know, it's supposed to be a five thousand dollar balance at the NSLP schools. So I don't care if, if they're on or they're off, as long as you know we're not digging into our pockets to pull. I, I, I right. think we're all in agreement with that yeah. scenario. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make it that's why I'm just nervous with the, you know if, if just you know just jumping off it without having someone. Mm -hmm. right. When we did it last time, they were here. They said, "Hey, this yep. is, this, you know," they were very confident. Told us, mm -hmm. they told us. It's going to be budget neutral for you. So I think that gave us and I think more high schools were off of it, if I remember correctly. When you yeah. looked at the state, the, the more the, the high schools were off of it, the elementary and the middle schools were not, which is, I think, why, whatever financially, why we kept Jockey Hollow on was yeah. a financial decision. No, no, that, but that map doesn't, if you did um, school, you know the, the map I'm talking about, uh, Ron or Jack, that has like, a map of all the towns. It's either green, white, or red. It showed like who was on program, who was off program, and who was partially. You don't know if that exists easily enough online, do you? Like so we could pull it now? Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> so you could see. It was only it was a, it was a it, it, it tended to be the ones that were totally off or like Westport, I think the Canaan there and uh, I think Madison. It was like a weird one way up in the corner somewhere. But we don't that, have that are off it? Mm -hmm. That yeah. were that were completely off. Yeah, but if we're seeing as much waste as I'm hearing about, you know, you're either, you're either going to feed the kids or you're not going to feed the kids, right? So it's like, if you want to feed them, then you want to give them food that they're going to eat to a certain extent, right? We're relatively healthy and see what we do. But having it to go to waste and, you know, getting, it's not just, what I'm saying is it's not just a reimbursement issue. You know, we do, they want it to be budget neutral, but you, you also want to have the kids Absolutely. fed. Or they're not going to buy it. Do you want it? Is it? Is it? Do you have it? Yeah. Okay. What is it, Jack? Do you want me to send you the link? Or? Um, that's all right. Uh, Take control. Just, um, Maybe just a Google? Yeah, School Lunch Program Map, Connecticut. It's very green. <laughs> it's very green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it seems like it's simple. And then it's the second link, the map. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a little green. Any greener would be St. Patty's Day. Well, that, because it looks like if you participate any way, you're green. Right? It doesn't look like no, that there's a uh, in between option. The green, the I white. believe, is healthy food certification. Yeah, that's, that's healthy food. Yeah. So that's that, the, means that, that, which, that means that every one of their schools is on Which we're, we're out, right? Right. Yes. And you look at, we do not participate in healthy food certification. Well, uh, so the majority do. Wow. And then the yellows are in the ones that are completely off program. They're yeah. ineligible for HFC, they do not participate in the NSLP. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's that? Nine. Seven. 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 Right? That are not? Is that what you're asking? Not the yellow. Yeah. Oh, the yellow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Eleven. The Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Eleven. And there's what, Joe, 174 districts? I know there's 169 towns, but I think there's yeah. 174 districts. Yeah. Yeah, those you just yellows. have that number in your head? No. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, you do. I don't. <laughs> you do now. <laughs> okay, so Ron's going to get us uh, <clears throat> an answer from the state, and then we'll uh, agenda it for next meeting. And uh, Mike, we're all coming for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> don't tell them. <laughs> I mean, if people did want to, I mean, the one thing I would say is, if, you know, I, I don't see as much as least. I don't know, Mike, if you see it, if yeah, you're in the cafeteria every day. I, I would just suggest before we make broad generalizations that if you want to visit, go visit and go, go eat lunch. No, but that's, that's the valid question. Are, are you seeing it in the schools? I mean, I, I don't see an excessive amount of it, to be honest. Okay. I mean, it was a long time ago, but I did cafeteria duty for 34 years, and more was eaten than thrown away. But I know that was a long time ago. But especially at that age, they just eat. Right. You know? I mean, elementary, they probably <laughs> throw out more. <laughs> but if anyone here, seriously, anybody wants to yeah, no, I was, one day, please. Right. But the other interesting number might be how many lunches are being bought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Well, I so, mean, the, the waste conversation is a little different too because it's not necessarily an indicator. If they're starving, they might eat it. Are they eating good food? Right. Yeah. That's yeah. it's the quality issue that's also a component of this. I mean, that's not a bad. I can't. Can we survey the parents, Joe? I don't know. I'm just asking. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to uh, number eight. Our presentation. Joe, do you want to introduce? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sheila will. Um, I have uh, Mary Rauner and Kristen Ruby here, our uh, two library media specialists at the uh, at the elementary level, <clears throat> and they are here just to talk a little bit about the revised um, curriculum for the library learning commons. Um, so one of the things that I, I'm I sure they'll talk board. about it. <laughs> One of the, you know, one of the byproducts of the, of, of the pandemic was that our students became technology savvy very quickly, uh, just out of necessity, and that forced, uh, that forced both Mary and Kirsten to go back and take a look at the curriculum and, and revise the curriculum to kind of meet the meet the kids where they are now, which is further than they were some years ago. You'll see some of the uh, early standards that the kids had to uh, had to achieve, and. How much further she passed, they are from that now. So I'll let Mary and Kirsten. And I'm just going to sneak in first, Joe. Um, I just passed out to you a document that I apologize didn't end up in the agenda. So I'll make sure that Terry has it with the curriculum document for the revision work in the next agenda. So that way, then you can do your first review and your second review and approval mm -hmm. of it. But in for tonight, I want you at least to have Thank you. We have. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us the time to speak with you tonight. Uh, my name is Kirsten Barubi. I am a counterpart for Mary Rahner. We are the library media specialists here in district for the three elementary schools. Uh, Mary has been at Fawn Hollow for the last 11 years. Um, for the last four years, I was um, strictly at Monroe Elementary School. This year, I am split between both Monroe Elementary School and Stepney Elementary School. So we are certified library media specialists. We do have a full fixed schedule meeting with the students in the three schools. Go yeah, for it. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we do as elementary library media specialists for the schools in Monroe? To begin with, we co-teach. We work very closely with the teachers to make sure that the skills that we are providing for the students align with the school, um, align with the skills that the teachers are working on in the classroom. Especially with now being one-to-one -one with the Chromebooks and everything that's transpired with the at-home learning, it's really important that we're keeping this, the students safe, respectful, responsible on their devices. So we have a full set of lessons that we do K through five for digital citizenship. How can they use the devices in a very safe manner? We teach technology skills right from kindergarten. What is a Chromebook? How do you use a Chromebook? How do we be safe on a Chromebook? We start introducing Google Suites to the students. We start teaching the research process right from kindergarten. The kindergartners are going onto websites where they're picking topics they want to learn about. They're listening. They're putting it into their own words. They're taking notes on it. We go all the way up through fifth grade with the research process. We teach them about sources, primary and secondary sources, um, fake news, reliable sources. We go through plagiarism, citations, bibliographies. We maintain the library collection. We check in the books. We check out the books. We take care of damaged books. We make sure that the collection is what our students and our faculty need to be successful. We make sure that we know the interests of the students, so the books that we have are books that they're going to be interested in reading, as well as books that will support what they need within the curriculum. We teach the students how to navigate the library. When they come in, what's the difference between fiction and nonfiction? Where are they housed? How are they put on the shelves? If a student comes in and they know that there's a specific book they're looking for, how can they use the computer to search for it and then find it on the shelf? Or if it's not available, how can they go about getting that book? My favorite one on the list, we instill a love of reading in these kids. At elementary level, this is where we need to hook them to get them to be lifelong readers. And when they walk into a library with 12,000 plus books and all you see is the spine, we really need to know the students' interests. So when they walk in and they say, oh, Mrs. Bruby, I don't know what I want today, that I can walk over to the shelf and I could say, you know what, this is the book for you this week. 
There's also some other things that come up on a very regular basis for us whenever there's um, testing going on, the STAR testing and things like that. We make sure that the kids are all set up with the devices, the devices all are all ready to go for the students. Many times a day we have students coming to us in the library saying, oh, my Chromebook isn't doing this or my Chromebook is doing that. So fielding all of the little tech issues for the students throughout the day. Plus making sure that we have fully staffed libraries in all three schools, making sure that from the moment those students walk through the door until they leave, that there is a person there that can help them with whatever their needs are, be it finding sources, technology, whatever their needs are, that we are there to support them. So that brings us to the, uh, you know, the rationale for our revisions. Um, Joe had kind of mentioned it. You'll see in a minute the difference between when we um, first started, mainly the primary grades. Um, they only had a handful of Chromebooks in each classroom, two, three, maybe. They were using them, you know, more for centers, um, just to use the mouse, you know, get used to the mouse pad. Um, very, very basic um, things. And then as we started to move more towards a one-to-one -one district, every class was getting more Chromebooks. Um, the kids were being introduced to, you know, the Google Suite more, different programs. They were um, starting to build the foundation for research um, a little bit more. And, um, and because of that access, then the need for digital citizenship um, at the lower grades really, you know, internet safety, that really came into play, um, as well as the, the uh, intermediate grades because they were also getting more and more, you know, Chromebooks in the classroom. Um, and then as we were getting those um, Chromebooks, then the, um, you know, pandemic hit, and then kids um, were using more of the Google Suite, more programs at home. Um, teachers were asking us, you know, can you, can you quick teach them this? Can you teach them that? We need this, we need that. So now going into the, the um, upper grades, they know um, a lot more than what they had in the past. The primary grades really um, are using more and more um, of the programs in the Google Suite than we had in the past. So we kind of had to shift everything uh, down to um, the primary grades because they're just, they're more comfortable with it. They're using, um, you know, research. Uh, skills more they're they're using the Chromebooks more so we just wanted to uh, to revise the curriculum to reflect that movement as we were going through this process we also wanted to pay close attention to how what we do with the students is aligning with the vision of the graduate the vision of the graduate is something that the school has been working on for several years we've both been on committees throughout the process and in reflecting on what we do with the students, some key things popped out for us that we do that aligns with that. We're really working on their critical thinking and problem solving skills. Um, communication is a huge thing now that there's so much technology out there. Not only how do we communicate first face to face, but how are we going to communicate with people safely, responsibly, respectfully if we are on a device. We're also helping to develop their curiosity. When they come in and they're looking for books, I actually had a student say to me, this is so cool coming in here because I'm learning things I didn't even know I could learn. And it's, it's just such an exploration time for the students. We're working on developing empathy and compassion, especially through the digital citizenship units that we're working on. And also really, um, working on flexibility and perseverance not giving up okay how are we going to do this there's many ways that we can go about doing this let's find what works best for you and and get you going again so we decided to highlight um kindergarten first and second grade for you so you can see some of the changes from when this program first started in 2012. For kindergarten the only skill that was required of them was to be able to use a mouse to click We've had multiple revisions since then, and now where we are at is the students are learning what a Chromebook is, how do you use it safely. They're learning basic keyboarding skills. They're navigating in between tabs. We're opening up websites. We're using links. We're bookmarking their favorite uh, websites. We're maximizing. We're minimizing. We're introducing them to the um, beginning of the Google Suites with Google Classroom, Google Docs, and Google Slots. We have something K to five called an assured experience. It's kind of like uh, what a capstone project would be in the high school. 
So at the end of every grade level, the students are taking the skills from the classroom, the skills that we are providing for them in the library, and they're creating projects. So this is an example of a kindergarten project. The students are going to Pebble Go where they pick an animal, they research the animal, they're taking notes on the animal that they've learned about, and then they're creating a little presentation in Google Slides. So the first slide is showing how they're able to insert images into their presentation. The second slide is highlighting that in kindergarten, they're able to type a sentence beginning with a capital letter, having spaces in between their words, ending with punctuation marks. First grade, we got a little more intricate in 2012. Not only would they be able to, you know, click with the mouse, but they'd actually be able to drag and drop things too. Now we have progressed to the kids are learning how to use capital letters and punctuation marks. They're learning about the font, the, um, the color, the sizes, how to change that. We're also introducing to them how to play videos and um, use those for note taking and research purposes. How to play, pause, and rewind, use the volume controls. Uh, within the Google Suites, they're creating documents. They're learning how to access those, to name them, and to share them out. This is the Assured Experience for first grade. It's a little different than what the other um, grade levels do. Ian Lowell created this for us several years back, and it's a virtual uh, field trip throughout the town of Monroe. So the first grade students here are learning how to navigate through a virtual map. They're able to click on different buildings that are significant around the town, and once they get into that specific building, there's a video that the students can click on, and someone from each of those respective buildings is telling the students about their job. Uh, in the revision for grade two, you can see the um, original was obviously building on using the, the mouse pad, but now um, doing a little more keyboarding skills and typing. Um, so now we're continuing to do uh, videos uh, for note taking so that they're listening and watching, which um, ends up being on the SBAC in third grade. So it's a little um, prequel to that. They're you know, opening up web browsers, starting to do keyword searches and databases, um, learning that technology related vocabulary. They do star testing on the Chromebooks in second grade as well. So they will, a lot of this um, tech vocab, they'll use on the test even just to navigate throughout the, um, the test so their sh a shirt experience is um, this is a piece of it they create a plant slideshow where um, they label parts of plants they talk about the life cycle of the plant um, so these are just two two pieces of that slideshow um, so you can see on the left they were inserting shapes um, to almost build their plant and then they uh, labeled it and then they inserted the pictures into the template of the life cycle of the plant so they resized it they found it um, and then they inserted the the pictures um, in grade three, this um, assured experience goes right with the art of information writing, which is one of the TC units. So they pick um, an animal of their choice, they do um, research on it, and then now not only are they reading um, nonfiction, but they're creating their own nonfiction slideshow. So again, just two quick examples from one of them. You can see on the left that this student found um, two images of a sea star and then um, had to put the captions in there. So they were learning about captions as part of their nonfiction text feature. And then um, one of the, the uh, pieces that they have to include is a table of contents. So that's just an example of their, their table of contents um, as an understanding of that is also another nonfiction text feature. Um, grade four, they, this is their social studies assured experience. So they study regions uh, in the fourth grade. And one um, of the essential questions is who are the or original inhabitants of that region, what Native American uh, tribe. And so again, this is just a small piece from their, um, from their project. And you can see it's, it's a little bit more information, I'm still inserting the, the images, now they're changing the fonts. Um, they're also, learning about, I also need to give credit, um, that that's important. So um, along with the bibliography, the student just at the end also included, here was my resource, here was my resource. So just that beginning talk of, you know, um, being a responsible user by giving credit to your source. Um, so that's a piece that, that we talk about in fourth grade as well. 
the fifth grade assured experience is based on their colonial unit and the examples here are showing the first one is now they're inserting videos into their presentations and the second one is again showing their expanded knowledge of having a bibliography to give credit for the sources that they've used for their research so the cost of the district um, the work has been completed so that was done during our PD time and um, our after school meetings um, but really we feel like to move this into the future um, to you know really be pushed out as it was meant to be pushed out a reinstatement of a the full-time elementary LMS um, position would be necessary at Stepney um, so that really all the schools um, and the students could be receiving district-wide equitable exposure um, to the skills that would really make them 21st century learners That's it. Question. Okay. Any questions? Any questions at all? It's in the budget, right? To have that. Mm -hmm. What did we we it's have an LMS in there? It's in the, right. it's in the budget, right? That was a good presentation. I like I liked um I liked it and I liked seeing like what the kids were navigating through and seeing and going Thank to you. the different buildings and that was first for first grade, right? Yes, and yes. Kids, yeah, and yeah. That's somebody a, pops that's up and tells them yeah. from that building what their job mm -hmm. is. That's mm -hmm. really cute and mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> and then we culminate that with the students taking a field trip to actually go and visit some of those places as well. They'll go to the library where they'll get their first library card, yay. Um, they'll go to the town hall and get to meet some of the people working there as well. I um, I still remember growing up in Monroe and going to my my field trip to the Monroe Library and getting my first well I probably already had a library card but getting I remember doing that yeah it was really yeah fun. It's so fun yeah do we do we have keyboarding as part of our curriculum I know yes what I was going with it, so yeah so they do um, right now K one two and three we actually pay for um, typing club. So it, you can do it online for free. It doesn't let you get very far. You yeah. do might do a lesson or two. But now for uh, K to three, I I, I think I think we dropped four to bring it down to K. So we pay um, for K to three to have access to it. And four and five, we we kind of took the philosophy of by now. You know, they if they've been doing it for the past few years, they're doing so many docs and slides and other things on the um, the Chromebook that. Is it the same way we learned with like the home row when you go from there like that? <laughs> it's yes, uh, yes and no. It's really cute. It's it's like the for the younger grades they do all this warm up where they're doing this and they're clapping and they're doing their finger warm up and then they're finding the letters and doing you know like a a a a a and there's a little monkey that's on the screen showing them you know what to so and then as in second and third grade it's a little more of focusing on what letters are on the home row and, and it is um, that's like yeah. a veggie you're typing exactly yeah and and even in kindergarten they'll say like use Use your use your pointer finger to find this you know so they're like this and then they're doing this with their pinky and then they're, <laughs> you know but they're learning thing, but they're it yeah it yeah anyway, so and well. they're and exactly and they're learning okay they each finger does do something mm. yeah. even if I can't quite reach it it, it is funny <laughs> watching them trying to you know twist and you know which kids play the piano yeah that's true <laughs> but they are but they are getting it like yeah yeah because I mean we took that I mean I date myself right that was high school mm -hmm. and, um, yeah I'm, I'm do we have it as part of high school curriculum as well? Well, they probably already know how to type. Yeah. By then, it's too good. Well, see, the, yeah. the, re the reason they won't I'm be typing, they'll be talking. Well, now the they're doing their thumbs. Now they I'm, just do their thumbs. I, yeah, like I'm, I'm watching, you know, again, you know, my kids typing, and there, there still is some like hunting and pecking. It's not like the, this, you know? Mm. Yeah. And I just, I don't know if that's, Quick they're not in high school yet, so that's why I was asking. Like, if we learned that a little bit later, computers kind of came in. Mm. But they, you know, that should be ingrained in them, you would think. But, I don't know. Anybody. Yeah, I think my high school, my high school son. I don't think. I think he does this. Yeah. Oh, Christopher types like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. How many of them have <laughs> phones? Have the so there you go. Yeah. Well, a lot of the too, and we we've had many discussions about this too. Is a lot of the devices that they're using aren't don't even have the ability right. for this. It's it's this. Yep. Off the off the wall question. I understand how this improves the technology. And starting early is great, and obviously you know. It does, you know, reading and writing. Mm -hmm. Is there any coursework at these stages that deals with arithmetic? I, I don't want to learning Excel, but you know, is there anything that you do in that regard? Because math is a, obviously an issue across the several districts, <laughs> like all of them. Um, is there anything you can do to improve that at this level, or am I off base? Um, 
We really don't start them. Mm -hmm. I would think like Google Sheets would probably be mm -hmm. maybe what you were, you know, talking mm -hmm. about just with the formulas. Something makes um, me have fun. Yeah, yeah. For you, but you know, for the, for the rest <laughs> yeah, of they don't yeah. use Excel. They use the all Google. They all the use sheets, Google. Yeah. Yeah. Google Sheets. Yeah. And yeah. we did take it. Was it two or three years ago where we we all got together um, K to twelve, and we made sure that we were aligned that what we were doing brought them up to what the middle school needed to have them be able to do when they walk through the door and then again did the middle school have them ready to enter kindergarten or excuse <laughs> kind of high school with the skills yeah it, it i would say it's primarily literacy yeah, based yeah, though yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. alan good um i have a question um about the bibliography like mm -hmm. how do you like We'll take fifth grade for example but like how do you teach the fifth graders like the difference between um a good reference and a re another reference that may be less than accurate, like when they're doing something like Native Americans or right, right. How do you teach them to differentiate between the two? Well, right now we're fortunate that we have a few pretty good databases, so we talk to them about the fact that um, if it's if it's something that's published, um, it's had to go through. Uh, many people had to go through editors and publishers and if you're going to pay for it then so we have that conversation that those are usually pretty safe it's when we talk about Google, you know if you're going to google for information um, things to look for is who's the author um, is it what's is the website you know updated is somebody you know looking at it you can always tell at the bottom you know when the last um, copyright of it was um, do you know who the author is? Can you can you do a separate search and find out if there's any background information? Is it an institution? You know how um, how well do you know that institution? Um, can you also do a lateral search for the information? So we do the tree octopus, you know, and we say, all right, and the kids, of course, you know, right away they want to believe it. Um, so we say, all right, do a lateral search. Can you find any other place where they talk about the tree octopus? Can you find any other information? And you can't, you know, and so they say, oh, wait a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you should start downing that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of go through a little checklist with them. But really we say, you know, your best bet is to use databases, books, magazines, things that have gone through the publishing process because so many eyes have had to be on it. Um, and that websites are great and that, you know, they, they absolutely can be a resource, but that definitely having a book or a magazine as at least one of your resources is, is a must. And also making sure that they have a minimum of three resources so that way it's kind of fact checking within itself as they're going. Yeah, yeah. And then as far as actually creating the bibliography, um, in the middle school they have noodle tools which is amazing because it you put the information in and it just creates the bibliography for you. So, you know, we really don't teach much about, like, remember it was put the author, <laughs> comma, or the last name, comma, first name, period, colon, this, that, you know, because they have something that creates that mm -hmm. for them. So we really focus they more on giving, I know, <laughs> <laughs> all those <laughs> hours. We right. do start off, yeah. yeah. We yeah. Start yeah. learn how to type on a typewriter. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. mistake. Yeah, correct type. No, we yeah. start off very so simple though. with the. <laughs> so now it's just like, know that you have to give credit, you know, mm -hmm. because eventually in middle school, you're going to have something that creates it for you but just understand that it's your responsibility to give credit um, to your source that's, that's where you really get the financials in because about. of a legal liability and how much you're paying when you <laughs> rip this stuff off <laughs> yeah exactly all right thank you very much yeah thank you thank you yeah, thanks, Barry. thanks Christian. Yeah. yeah okay we're going to move on to uh, old business which there is none so we will move to new business and we have a first review of two policies 51455 sexual harassment and 6172.6 distance education and Shannon can you brief us on those changes yes um, so this comes up at our next meeting for a vote right yes but, um, the 5145.5 sexual harassment it defines sexual harassment and establishes the district's non-tolerance of this type of behavior the policy also includes the procedures for reporting and investigating claims of sexual harassment. The reporting, investigation, and determination procedures were reviewed and aligned with our Title IX policy. Um, they needed to align with the Title mm -hmm. IX policy. So our Title IX policy was recently reviewed and updated to include the most current procedures for addressing claims of a sexual harassment, and the two policies will now reflect the most current um, procedures based on state statute. So they needed to align. 
Okay, um, Christine, any comments on that policy? Nope. At all? Jerry, anything nope. on that? Very straightforward. Okay. Yeah, Distance, it's all Cape. Yeah. 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 Okay. Distance education, Shannon? Okay. Um, this policy addresses the board's belief that distant edu distance education through online learning can be an effective means of instruction for some students. The revision of the policy reflects the growing opportunities that exist for students to earn online high school credits and at other academic institutions, as well as the criteria required to transfer online credits from one institution to Massac High School. I think this was last updated a really long time ago where none of this was applicable, so it needed to just come into uh, today's day and age with with what is happening. Okay. Christine, anything? No. Mm -mm. Jerry, anything? Yeah, I mean, pre-COVID, we had a few kids that were outside taking, and with COVID, we, we really did have to change yeah. all, of, all of our learning. And once but again, this it's, was, it's This was all a little Cape. different. This yeah. was like if somebody was in an online, mm -hmm. say they the were on, in a online, Broadway yeah. play and they were in, in an online school and then yeah. they're coming back, you. you know, yep. what, what credits could they earn, mm -hmm. what was accept, you know, and it just kind of outlines that, mm -hmm. that yeah okay any questions right, on either of these two Dennis I just had a question who's our title nine coordinator since it's listed Joel, the it's title Jack and Darlene okay thank you she's thank raising you. her hand back there. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the changes in there it just took off the uh, the title yeah, it had the titles of those two but a little clean was, up language yeah. uh, we'll we'll um, Further discussion and vote on this next meeting. But any other questions on this now? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move to uh, new business item number B, healthy food certification with a vote anticipated. And um, Joe, you want to brief us on this one? Sure, yeah. The next couple, uh, I'll just try to walk you through here. So this is a motion, and whoever makes the motion, if they can just read it exactly the way it's written here. And then what you're, it's going to be a yes or a no vote. So, um, Basically, if you vote yes, you're going to say, yes, we want to be part of the healthy food certification. We want to opt into the healthy food certification. If you vote no, you're saying we do not want to be into the healthy food certification. Um, we've always been no, mass exhaust program, you know, at least that one for now. Um, so it's usually a no vote. And then I'll, I'll go into the, the next vote. You won't have to do number two if you vote no on number one. Any questions? I, um, make a motion this was the piece in Joe's presentation that we didn't talk much about we were already off um, but so I, I think I'm wording it right I'm gonna make a motion um, to not you could read it if you want to just read mm -hmm. it just right read, it. From read it right from off of the agenda you, you have it, it on the agenda isn't that it number one no board? right on the mm -hmm. in the agenda are you on the agenda have, have fun reading it it's you're <laughs> in the agenda <laughs> here show me here Shannon. <laughs> That first one right there. You got it? Uh, where do I start? Pursuant to Make a motion Pursu read all of that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pursuant to CGS section 10 215 F, the Board of Education or Governing Authority certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut nutrition standards during the period of July 1, 22 through June 30th, 23. This certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including but not limited to school stores, vending machines, school cafeterias, culinary programs, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or non-school organizations and groups. Um, That's it. Okay, I have a motion from, very long motion from <laughs> Shannon. Uh, who has seconded it? Second. Christine. Okay. All those voting no, please raise your hand. Uh, is that everybody? Mm -hmm. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, so then we can skip number two, Joe. So now you can skip number two and, and now explain number three. Yep, yeah, number three is the um, is the waiver on beverages. So basically, a yes vote. And again, yep, yeah, we have to read this one um, as well. Read this motion, but basically, a yes vote allows us to. We can't sell soda during the day, but a yes if we voted no, we wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't be seeking a waiver. And we wouldn't be able to sell 
sports drinks at the swim uh, meets at, and at the swim meets mm -hmm. or down on the, the, all, the games, right, yeah. and all the fundraising and whatnot so a yes vote here says yes we are asking for a beverage waiver okay so that would really well go ahead oh no go ahead no read read the motion i'm i'm, I'm I, sh I have to comment during our discussion but go ahead. Oh, okay i'm making a motion uh, the Board of Education or Governing Authority will allow the sale to students of beverages not listed in Section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes provided that the following conditions are met. One, the sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend, so not during school. The sale, number two, the sale is at the location of the event, and three, the beverages are not sold from a vending machine or a school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice meeting or extracurricular activity. The school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the beverage sales. Okay, Shannon has made a motion. Do I have second. a second? second? Dennis seconds it. Um, uh, for discussion, I just want to add that um, we've uh, we've always voted yes on this one, yes. and um, to not would really hurt all of our groups at uh, at the sports games and you know pretty much everything that that sell these beverages. So, mm. um, Dennis, did you want to comment on that? No, well? no. I don't okay, think. okay. So all voting yes, please raise your hand. Around the table, unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, motion passes. Our next item, number C, is the approval of the budget transfers. Can I have a motion to approve the budget transfers as discussed? Shannon, seconded by Dennis. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. The motion passes. Um, item number D, if I can have a motion to extend the superintendent's contract by one year, and then we'll discuss by Shannon, seconded by Jerry. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion on this. Um, per the superintendent's contract, I received a letter from Joe on 3-3 of this year asking for a one-year extension. Um, I am finalizing the wording in his evaluation that we discuss in executive session, so Joe and I will sit down and do that. Um, exactly as we had discussed and um, I would like to say to Joe though that you know we're very pleased with your performance and, and the performance of the district and thank you very much keep up the good work any other discussions no just seconding that mm -hmm. <laughs> Outstanding job. third third that too <laughs> especially you. Um, you know just just taking over the realm as we went right into a global pandemic and um, remote learning for the first time and and all of the all of the things that you had to to deal with um we are very fortunate to be in such capable hands and and your relationships with everybody um throughout the district and the town just really Same. came together and we we really appreciate it mm -hmm. thank you good to have you at the helm <laughs> thank you you want you can't make that up that that was that was pretty extraordinary <laughs> I did not relive that piece again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we don't want you to. Um, you know, the, the board recognizes that um, you've done a phenomenal job. You went from you know in crisis mode, um, from staffing to budget to a pandemic, um, and you pulled us through uh, very well. And we appreciate that. Um, hopefully, things are calming down. If I can say that quietly, um, and we can all get back to doing the business of education. So. Um, and in the midst of that, never lost focus on the students, like exactly yeah. where it should be. Yeah. Like we just, uh, we just, we really are lucky. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Can we amend his letter? The <laughs> 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 problem is, it only said um, one year. One year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that so that you understand, the superintendent is in a three-year contract, and per his contract, he requests an extension every year, so that we just keep moving it year, year, year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of extending the superintendent's contract? Unanimous, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Joe, you're stuck thank with you. us. <laughs> 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 yeah, he didn't, he didn't have a vote. <laughs> right, right. He didn't have a vote, thank God. Yeah. 
Motion passes. Jerry. Jerry. Motion Jerry. to adjourn. <laughs> Seconded by <laughs> Shannon. All those in favor? As you're walking out the door, aye. Motion passes. Aye. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.